Hi guys, um, I hope you're all well. I'm just out walking Lily at the minute through the woods. This way, Lil, good girl. As you can hear, she's out of breath. She's been chasing rabbits and deers and living her best doggy life that she can, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just out in the woods and I'm gonna start making these shorter videos where I discuss certain things that have been on my mind or things that I've maybe thought of in recent days. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want to stay, stay more active. In between the bigger videos, the documentary or short documentary style videos that I make, um, I'm going to be posting whenever I think of something, whenever something pops into my mind that I think, oh, you guys would probably like to hear about this or I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, then I'm going to create these videos that are pretty much unedited and um, just really raw videos, <clears throat> almost vlog type style um, conversations that we'll be having. So I hope you don't mind me doing that. But um, I do need to stay active. I think what's happened to me in the past is that I get out and I create these um, polished videos with music and voiceovers and B-roll and A-roll. And sometimes they're multiple day trips and I've got drone footage. I've got everything going on. And by the time I've done all that and I've edited it, you know, it's, it's thrown me out of the loop. Um, my creativity has kind of took a knock. So this is my way of trying to keep creative and um, keeping content coming thick and fast to the channel. So I hope you don't mind, like I've said, this is gonna benefit both of us because you guys will get your say as well. And it also helps me get a few of my thoughts out onto, onto the channel. Something I want to discuss today is, um, I've actually just thought of this <laughs> while walking down this, this strip through the woods. And <clears throat> I'm gonna come full circle so you guys understand why I've thought of this and how it relates to the paranormal. So I used to work in a car park and I worked there for like 10 years, a multi-story car park, there were seven floors and um, the amount of time during that 10 years that I would get people braying on the office window accusing me that their car had been stolen on my watch, it happened a lot, a lot more than you probably think. Um, now for that to have happened would have almost been impossible. Um, no car was ever stolen from the car park in the whole in the whole lifespan of that car park being there, let alone me working in that short 10 years. But people would be adamant and they'd bray on the window and they'd accuse me and then I'd panic a little bit thinking, oh my God, maybe this guy's right, maybe this woman's telling the truth. But usually what happened um, would be human error. A lot of the time people would come and they'd say, my car's gone, it's not there. It's been taken out of the car park, someone's stolen it. So what I used to do is I used to take their car fob, their key off them, and I'd get them to start on level one and we'd walk around together all the way up to level seven, clicking the key fob. And you guessed it, you'd walk up to level three or four and as you're clicking the fob, someone's car would go beep, beep. There you go, there's your car. And what would happen is that they would be adamant that they parked on a different level, but they've got it wrong, they didn't. They parked on level three rather than level seven, let's say. And this happened a hell of a lot, at least like once a week. I would get this happening. There was one guy even um, that came and again braid on the window, accused me that his car had been stolen on, on my watch and that I was in big trouble. Um, I needed to get the manager as soon as possible. So um, <clears throat> again, I did the whole take the key fob off them, walk around together, going up all the levels, clicking the key fob and no car went Beep, beep. <laughs> so you can imagine I'm now panicking because like he says, this is on my watch and I would hate to think that anybody's car got stolen while I was while I was on shift. So I'm thinking this just doesn't make sense because one, you know, people are always in this car park. It's a busy car park. They're going to see someone breaking into your car. That's the first thing. The second thing is you need a ticket that generates on the entry to get back out. You know, and, and if you press the help button there, it's only coming back to me. And I would have spoke to this person and been able to see them on camera and, and all sorts of different um, hoops that they, that they would have had to have jumped through to get that car out had it been stolen. But sure enough, the car wasn't there. So now I'm getting confused, I'm getting worried. And as a last ditched attempt, I said to the guy, can I please look at your ticket to see what time you drove in? And he showed me the ticket and it was a different car park completely. The guy had come back to where I worked when in actual fact he'd parked his car about a mile and a half, two miles away in a different car park. Now you're gonna be sat there thinking, what has this got to do with anything? 
The reason I'm telling you this is because sometimes we can convince ourselves that we did or didn't do a certain thing. And in the paranormal world, I think that that could answer for a lot of things that people believe was paranormal. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me, don't get this twisted. I do believe that the paranormal is real 100% because I've lived through it. I know that there is something beyond this world. Um, some other life force that continues, whether it's humans after we've died or whether it's angels, demons living in a different realm. I don't know what, what this something is. I just do, I know the paranormal exists is what I'm saying. But there's a lot of things that I hear on podcasts and other people's stories where it just takes me back to my car parking days thinking that that could have been human error. And I, I did this myself only uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago. I'd gone downstairs into the kitchen. Um, I'd gone underneath the sink where all the cleaning products are for the house. I'd opened the drawers, ran back upstairs with the cleaning products, done my cleaning, come back downstairs later on that night. I think about four or five hours had elapsed because by this point, I'd just basically jumped on the bed, started watching TV or, or whatever it was. And then later that night, when it was dark outside, um, the house was quiet, Lily was settled. I come back downstairs into the kitchen and lo and behold, I almost fell to the floor in shock because the cupboard doors in the kitchen were open. And I was, <laughs> now that isn't something that I see every single day. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing that same routine every single day. So for me, I didn't remember for a split second going in there to get the products. And all I thought was, oh my God, someone's in the house. Like someone's been like, or is this, is this some kind of poltergeist activity? What is this? But sure enough, it was me. And, um, <clears throat> but for that split second, I, I had a small heart attack, <laughs> as you could imagine. And yeah, it, it's always amazed me because you, I could literally, and in fact, one guy even said this to me in the car park. He said, I would have bet my life on the fact that I never parked on that level. And I said, don't worry, it happens all the time. Like people, you know, they're convinced. Because you've got to remember as well, these people are getting high rates, so it's embarrassing for them. They're getting high rate, they're getting adamant, and they would bet their life on it that they didn't park on that level. Someone's moved their car and it's been taken and, you know, they've invested passion towards this this claim that when I finally proved to them that actually you've, you've just, you know, you've, you've got confused or... Um, what the hell? Is that a big cat? One second, I'm just going to flip this camera around. One second. Whatever that is, that is moving. One second, I'm gonna try and run down because I think it's crossing the field. We're some distance away as well, which means that that whatever it was was massive. Did you guys see that running across the field? I don't know where it's gone, but that was a huge cat or dog or whatever that was running across that field. Because I'm, I'm some distance from there. I mean, I guess probably about 900 meters. I'm gonna try and zoom in for you guys to, to have a look at whatever that was because. I just, as I was talking on the camera about this whole paranormal situation and how people get confused, I looked through the trees out into the clearing and I saw it running across the field. I don't have any idea what that was. But you got to remember, I, like I've said, I am some distance away. And that was big. Whatever that was, was big. And it was moving. Because it covered that field in no time at all. looking out now still 
10, 15 minutes later, seeing if I can see anything emerge from, from one of these fields, because up here, I've got a really clear field of view for miles around me, but I've not seen anything as of yet. Now, after being sat here for 10 minutes, four or five Land Rovers drove up this way. Now this is a very steep hill, so they're obviously out beating or, um, you know, doing some kind of gamekeeping. And the only thing I can think of is that whatever they were doing down there, pheasant shooting, rabbit hunting, they've scared this thing, whatever it was, because they were coming this way and that was running on the opposite side of the hedgerow in the opposite direction. So they would have even seen, they would have seen this thing from where they were. I'll, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll try and flip the camera again and explain this in, um, in, in better terms. So this is the field where we saw whatever that was running up the up the side of the hedge there. Coming down this track, coming down this track here was four or five Land Rovers. Eventually they passed me on this track going through that gate into the woods. But when they passed me on the back of their um, four befores and on their little gamekeeping vehicles, they had baskets with pheasants in so i think that they've been pheasant shooting obviously it makes sense when they've been down there beating wherever they may have been in these fields or hedgerows they've scared something out that they couldn't see because it was on this side and it's ran off over in this direction and they were driving down here so those guys for as close as they were to getting a, a, a really clear glimpse at this thing wouldn't have seen it that is insane. That is absolutely mental. And it's one of those things now where I'm sat up here thinking, I really want to see that again. It didn't even run. It didn't run like a dog. It ran more like a bear. Which is, I've looked, at, I've looked back at the footage really quickly and I've zoomed in and it runs like a bear. Not like any dog I've ever seen. Um, and it was definitely a big animal, whatever that was, because you can see how far away I am. I'll just zoom out. I mean... Yeah, you can see that it's some distance and it's still, even from this distance, looked really, really big. And it moved extremely, extremely fast. Where it could have gone after there, I'm not sure, because it's just one field after another field after another field. And most of these fields now have already been um, harvested. So they clear open the fields. You'd think that I'd be able to see it again emerging, but I haven't. I've not seen anything. That was very, very odd. Very, very odd. I'm, I, I feel stupid saying big cat. But it didn't even run like a big cat. It didn't run like a big cat or a big dog. I have no idea. Um, again, this video was not intended to be about this. This video was more intended to be about the paranormal and how people can misinterpret things. Did those guys just scare something out of the undergrowth? Saying that is crazy.